great honor and great pleasure to introduce to you a person that really doesn't need an introduction. Our county executive, please welcome the Honorable Marcus Molinaro. That was nice of you. That was very nice of you. Thank you. Where do you start? I have to tell you that Charlie did neither uh, lie nor exaggerate that story, uh, although I was uh, 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 certainly happy if, uh, if the governor wanted to speak to the chamber, uh, I would give you a break from having to listen to me yet one more time. But uh, uh, I'm here today, and uh, Charlie, uh, I want to uh, extend on behalf of Dutchess County our, our thanks to you. Uh, really, uh, for uh, his entire uh, service uh, to this uh, Chamber of Commerce, no one has been a stronger uh, more, uh, more enthusiastic advocate uh, for the businesses of Dutchess County and Dutchess County as a whole than Charlie North. So Charlie, on behalf of Dutchess County, we're grateful for your impact, for your leadership, and your service. And uh, we uh, join with everyone else in celebrating the great works of Charlie North. <laughs> you know that one. <laughs> He looks happy. I, uh, <laughs> I look somehow pressed against his face. I'm not sure. I had to get off the dais uh, because if you think Denise Van Buren's jokes are lousy with the ones that she tells you, you should hear the ones that she whispers under, under her breath. They're just as bad. <laughs> but she puts a lot of energy into making up those jokes. A lot of energy. A lot of energy. energy. Expensive energy. Let's go. <laughs> I want to share with you very, it's not that expensive, Steve. It's very affordable, it's very affordable. We're okay. Uh, I, want to, um, I want to give you an opportunity to ask questions. And I did this last year, so if you uh, would allow me, um, the least effective way for me to talk about the state of Dutchess County is to stand behind uh, a podium. In fact, the least effective way is to do it in front of 200 people. I actually prefer to do it when I'm at the grocery store. Well, actually, I don't really because I'm trying to get my milk and bread and eggs, but nevertheless, at the grocery store or at the corner uh, or in small settings. So let me have a quick conversation about the context of Dutchess County. We live in a 70-30 world, and some of you know this, but we're going to keep reinforcing it to remind uh, people uh, what county government is up against. County government in the state of New York is unlike any place else in the country. We're the only state in America, only state in America, that requires county governments to be the provider of state and federal services. Only one in America. And for Dutchess County, 70% of what we do, 70% of Dutchess County's budget, 70 cents on the dollar that you pay to Dutchess County in taxes, goes to pay for the implementation and delivery of programs we have no control over, state and federal mandated programs. That's what it looks like in a dollar. Now just look at it for a moment because this is, if you think about it, you take the 70 cents out of the way and you stick with the 30 cents on the dollar that we have access and responsibility, direct responsibility and oversight for, think about how inflated local taxation is because Albany doesn't want to pay for the programs that they institute. I served five years in the state assembly, the place where some good ideas go to die, and, <laughs> and my argument was if you think that these are valuable programs, and by the way, I think they are. There are a lot of very valuable services that the state of New York wants delivered to those in our community. If they're that valuable to you, you should pay for them. If they're that important to you, you should pay for them. Why? It's a statement of, of your priorities. It's also to ensure accountability. If Charlie North and I go to lunch, which only happens every so often because he's never here. If, um, <laughs> if Charlie North and I go to lunch and Bob Allers and his family are at the table next door and Bob's having a grand old time, he's eating a lot of food, it's okay. <laughs> hey Bob. Nice to see you. I hope it's been a great day. Middle of my lunch with Charlie, Bob gets up, leaves. Charlie and I finish our meal, and they hand us the bill. My bill is for Charlie and all of Bob's family. That's what Albany does. And if you're not responsible for paying your check, do you care how much food you consume? If you're not responsible for paying your bill, do you care about accountability? Are you focused on waste, fraud, and abuse? You're probably not. At 4.58 this morning, 
Dutchess County E911 received a phone call that there was a fire. Some of you may have, may have driven by it on Route 9 in Wappingers Falls. At 5.02 a.m., three emergency response uh, teams from local fire departments, Hughesonville, New Hamburg, and Wappingers, along with first responders from uh, Mobile Life Ambulance and the Village of Wappingers Police Department, along with others, responded to a fire in the Village of Wappingers Falls. Right now, Dutchess County's fire investigation team, entirely volunteer, is determining the cause of that fire. All of what I just described to you falls within the category of optional services. Everything I just mentioned, that total response, falls within the category of the 30 cents under our control. And in Dutchess County's case, the centralized delivery of 911 service, you dial 911, you get a response, and at four minutes after the call, volunteers who were trained at Dutchess County's Emergency Response Department are responding four minutes after the call, and we do that for two cents on the dollar. Go ahead. Now, we're living in a world where county government's under a huge amount of pressure. Remember all those things we have to do? The state says we have to do them. Since 2007, a 70% increase in direct caseload at the Department of Community and Family Services. Why do we have to close for paperwork on Wednesdays? Because we have to keep up. 70% increase. Same is true in mental hygiene calls. State closes psych centers. The county is responsible now for providing services that we didn't have to provide before. Important, valuable services, mental health crises. 46% increase since 2007. At the same time, a 23% reduction in Dutchess County's tax base. The pie has shrunk for us significantly, mostly because the housing bubble burst. We were riding high for a while, continued growth in assessed valuation, homes overvalued, sorry guys, overvalued, and it started to settle. 23% reduction in tax base. At the same time, Dutchess County maintained a healthy fund balance, a reserve, a savings account. Why? Because when you have 34 snow events like we had this year, you need a, you need a savings account to reach into for cash flow. Because if there's a major natural disaster, you might recall April of 1997 when half of Dutchess County closed because of snowstorms, you need a savings account to draw from. Or God forbid an incident like a Metro North derailment happens in this community and not uh, just two counties to the south and you need to respond, you need a savings account. Thankfully, under strong and, and responsible leadership, we were able to sustain that savings account. And then the property tax cap came. And then the economy tanked. And then demand for services became so great that the county needed to use its savings account to provide services. So I come into office with not having the same access to a savings account. This savings account is used to plug a budget hole. Every year, we use a little bit of it, about 10 to $15 million historically, used to balance the budget. We can't necessarily do that because of the reasons I mentioned. And additionally, the bond raters, those who want to make sure that we have stable financial, a fi stable financial condition, want us to have a healthy reserve account. So when we borrow money, we get better rates, and we're not wasting your dollars. So we have to re replenish the fund balance. Now, at the same time, the county's responded fairly effectively. And the 30 cents that we have control over in the last two years, but cer since, certainly since 1990, we've been on a steady decline in workforce. And this is one of those in instances where doing more with less is an according phrase. It's the reality. We are doing significantly more with significantly less. In the last two years, 110 positions eliminated from county government. 30, we are the smallest workforce in 31 years. No one in New York State can say that. 31 years ago, 50,000 less residents, and the 70 cents on the dollar was more like 30 cents on the dollar in state mandates. There is no one in New York State who can say that they are the sixth lowest per capita in, ta in spending, the ninth lowest per capita in taxation, and they have a smallest workforce in 31 years. And with the 30 cents we have control over, we've been wringing out efficiencies. Last year, significant restructuring in county government, consolidation of departments, total savings uh, over the next five years, $38 million. Significant in a budget that's already fairly constrained. Now, at the same time, Dutchess County's economy has uh, been struggling. There's no question. You know that firsthand. 
We live uh, in a time where, quite frankly, we continue to face ec an economic recession. The tax base is, is still shrinking. Workforce is stabilizing unemployment starting to come down, but not significant enough to suggest that we're out of the woods. But the one engine of our economy that's been growing over the course of the last several years has been tourism. And thankfully, we've been seeing the growth. 7.7 .7 billion in New York State tourism spending, 25,000 jobs in New York State, $400 million in tourism spending in Dutchess County last year. Significant support to businesses. At the same time, we've seen these great businesses grow. The change in agriculture, for instance, from traditional farming to agribusiness, agritourism, and this has helped to sustain us. There is good news in Dutchess County's economy. We like to talk about the, the bad news because it seems to be all around us all the time. But I have to tell you that we've been able to sustain a government that provides efficient services. We have been able to sustain a quality of life from our rail trails to the walkway to great parks and great amenities to historic sites, the second largest agricultural fair in the state, and these businesses growing here in Dutchess, and we are primed for the next round of growth. At the same time, though, uh, and Charlie and the Chamber knows this firsthand, we have been restructuring our response to economic development. The future of our largest private sector employer is at best uncertain, although I would suggest to you it's probably more certain than we would like to admit, and that is that we have to change the way we address economic challenges. Uh, over the last year and a half, we've been working on a new strategy, six basic uh, principles with measurements. Somebody said to me on my way in, how do you make government work more like a business? You establish outcomes. You establish a metric to evaluate whether or not you've achieved those outcomes. And you have benchmarks along the way. For the first time in a long time, that's what we've said to the economic development infrastructure. We want to know. What do you intend to accomplish with the half a million dollars Dutchess County dedicates to you as economic development? And how are you going to get there? And does our strategy evolve with our challenge? Areas that we're focused on, retention and expansion, certainly. Job growth, 60% of job growth that comes from existing businesses. 70% of that job growth comes from single and small businesses within the county. Where's our best uh, return on smallest investment? Supporting existing businesses, supporting you bringing the chamber into economic development for retention and expansion. Expedited permitting and review. There are a lot of businesses that will compete in New York State. They're willing to take on the challenge. The taxes are high, the cost of living is high, the challenges are big, but they're willing to take the risk if only they knew that they could get through a review process that wasn't going to take them three and a half years to build an ice cream stand. And if you think I'm using a bad example, it exists. There are environmental reviews, certainly, and we want to work with municipalities. Todd uh, Tancredi's here, Town of Poughkeepsie is a good example. Speed up the review. Within county government, take the three agencies that do permitting, speed them up. Have them integrate, coordinate, work together, get the process done quicker. Also, we have an aging infrastructure. I don't need to tell you this, but the Northeast especially has been dismally behind in investing in infrastructure. It's partly our fault. We don't see it, so we don't want to spend money on it. But we have bridges, highways, roads, water and sewer that hasn't been expanded in decades. You want growth, you've got to bring water and sewer to businesses. You've got to bring water and sewer uh, to our, our commercial corridors. We are going to restructure our open space and farmland protection program to link infrastructure with farming preservation. Link infrastructure, bring, it to, bring water and sewer, leverage state and federal dollars into our commercial corridors while at the same time supporting not just the preservation of farmland, but the preservation expansion of farming as an industry. And by linking those two together, you can relieve pressure on open space so that we're not forcing development to go where it's easiest and provide a quicker path to growth through infrastructure advancement. Business attraction, we're still out in the world fishing. We have 2.5 million square feet of vacant commercial space in Dutchess County that needs to be filled. We need partners. We need to work with Central Hudson through their new commercial corridor investment that they're making this year with Dutchess County. We need to work with IBM to find a buyer to keep their space active, alive, and their people employed. Entrepreneur, entrepreneurial development, 20,000 college students in this county today, we're going to lose most of them. Our goal is to keep them here. And this group of uh, young professionals in particular, unlike anyone else, 
they're not tied to a time zone. They're not tied to a zip code, tied to a zip code. They don't want a 2,500 square foot home and they don't care about four acres of land. What they want is to live in a home that they can close up for three weeks while they go to Paris to do some work and then get back on the train and come here. And we've got to capture them now so they invest their time, their energy, their talent here. And IDA reform, the last tool for economic development at the local level is the use of these industrial development agencies. And we need to ensure again that we're, if we're going to invest your tax dollars to help a business, and some of you here have been benefited by Dutchess County's investment, there needs to be a measurement to, to achieve that, to, to ensure we achieve success. Now let me end by telling you this, right? I get to end by telling you this. We are without question living in a very turbulent time. There is no question. And I know over the last six months, you've read a lot about Dutchess County government. The upside is you probably know more about Dutchess County government today and have been more focused on what Dutchess County government does for Dutchess County residents and businesses than perhaps ever before. We went into the 2014 budget not wanting to decimate services. We have 30 cents on the dollar and we didn't want to eliminate those things. You don't want to wait when you dial 911. And you surely do not want to see on the front page of the Poughkeepsie Journal stories about how we can't plow snow. We know what that looks like. I say that sincerely. So we have to protect those things so that you get for, for your dollar the services that you deserve and that they're delivered efficiently. But at the same time, the state of New York gives us no alternatives. We asked Albany for an alternative. They said no. We asked Albany for relief. They said no. We only have two ways of filling, filling the gap and paying the bills, and we have an obligation to balance a budget. We asked you to share a burden with us, and you didn't like it. Experience is a brutal teacher, uh, but we've learned, certainly, and we, we've learned a lot. So the day we repealed the exemption, the sales tax exemption on residential energy, that decision was made in November of last year, October of last year. The day that we did that, we said again to Albany, fix your problem. Give us a break. You've got to pay your bills. And if you don't, the tax burden is going to grow on local taxpayers. And we spent every day negotiating. And thankfully, we kept our word. Now, I don't know about you, but I got 422 phone calls, emails, and uh, letters regarding the county's sales tax. Regarding the county sales tax. Most people said, when I said, listen, this is temporary, they said the same thing. Taxes don't go away. I'm not here to celebrate anything. We have a very tough challenge, and we've had to face it for a number of years, and the next 12 to 18 months are not going to be easier. But I will tell you this, we kept our word. We said to you that we're asking for temporary assistance, temporary burden. At the same time, we said to Albany, pay your bills, and thankfully in the 2014 state budget, they're paying a little more of their bills, and Dutchess County and your elected officials are keeping their word. On June 1st, the tax goes away. We subsidize that by the state paying for a a mental health crisis they helped create, and we will continue to advocate for relief. Ladies and gentlemen, I take very personally the challenge that you have given us. And for 20 years, since 1994, when I was first elected, I have lived and breathed public service because I believe in it. Because the people who got recognized today are just the tip of the iceberg. The hundreds of volunteers and generous contributors, the business leaders who sweat to keep their people employed and their businesses open, have an investment in this community and they deserve serious elected officials who take on challenges seriously. And so I will tell you that your county government is working aggressively to reduce the burden and at the same time protect you from onerous mandates and spending at Albany and the state level, while at the same time trying to maintain a quality of life that you enjoy, you want, and you appreciate. And for the honor of serving, I am exceptionally grateful. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Mark Molinaro. I am your county executive, and I will invest every hour of my day to ensure that this county gives back what you expect from it so that we can sustain and maintain a great quality of life and great character of community. And for that, I am grateful. Thanks very much. I look forward to some questions. Do you want to see that? <laughs> Mark, on behalf of the Dutchess County Regional Chamber of Commerce, its board members, members, and staff, please accept this painting from local artist Seth Nadell. You have the view outside your office, and now you've got a, a painting to prove it. Terrific, thank you. Are we, uh, he's going to do what, he's going to. Do you have any questions?
Any questions? Right over here. Uh, Medicaid, uh, Medicaid is worth $44 million. We're responsible for paying only state in America that does it this way. Special education, preschool, and early intervention services, about $9 million, only state in America that does that. And state imposed pensions that we have no control over. Again, uh, the state of New York uh, is the only state in America that does it this way. Any other questions? Yes, uh, first with consolidation of services. I believe in it. I've served now in every level of government and I can tell you there's too much of it. Uh, 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 first and foremost, county government has been really for the last decade committed to consolidation. Bill Steinhouse initiated many consolidation efforts within county government. This past year, significant consolidations. Next year, we are looking at merging the departments of health and department of mental hygiene to create an integrated delivery of service, also save money. At the same time, Todd Tancredi knows this, and some of my local officials know this, at the same time, we've said to the towns, villages, and cities of Dutchess County, you've been doing business one way forever, you can do it more effectively. I know this because you tell us that you have ways to consolidate. So we put on the table a million dollars and said to municipalities, you compete, you identify the outcome, but we will fund the consolidation of local governments. We got great programs last year, this year, focused on consolidation and outright dissolution. If you have two library districts and can live with one, we'll help you get there. If you have two fire districts and you can live with one, we'll help you get there. It is time that government in the state of New York gets challenged. It has not changed much for the last 200 years. There's just more of it. And that each and every one of us in government needs to question why we do it the way we do it. And I'll end with this one example, and I mean no, no disrespect. For 30 years, the county executive is, by the way, by charter, responsible for signing every contract. Every contract. Is there about 1,000 of them we signed? Well, I, I don't count all of them. 2,000. For 30 years, five copies. Do you know why? We don't know either. So uh, <laughs> at a time, listen, before digitalization would have you, everybody needed their own original copy. We don't need that anymore. So now the county executive signs two copies. Saved us about, I don't know, $80,000 in paper each year. Point being that you've got to turn over every stone. You've got to look to other providers, great not-for-profits, family services, Grace Smith House, the children's home, others who can provide the services more efficiently than we can, bring them together, establish outcomes, establish goals, measure those goals, measure those outcomes, and spend the money more wisely. So all of us have to change the way we do business in order to compete in a 70-30 world, and we're committed to it. Thanks very much. Have a great day.